Hi everyone, this is Dr. Kristen Hess. I'm going to use three column notes to talk to you about some math concepts today. The focus of today is the margin of error. The question we want to talk about is a problem where we're given the sample size, our sample of mean value, sample mean, our standard deviation, and we want to find the margin of error at a specific confidence level. So first, what is the margin of error? The technical definition is it tells you how many percentage points your result will differ from the real population value. So for example, if you're 90% confident with a margin of error of 3% that your sample mean or your sample standard deviation will be within 3% of the real population mean or population standard deviation. You'll see this a lot as you're taking measurements or have data sets where you don't know the whole population, but you know the sample. And so by having that sample data, you can make estimates of what you expect the population data to look like. Think about all the animals in the world. You're never going to have every single animal if you're looking at a specific lizard or a specific bear or whatnot. And so you collect data on the sample to make conclusions about the population because you don't have the entire population available. So n, lowercase n, is your sample size. It's the number of individuals in the group. The capital N would be for the population. So if you're looking at a specific type of bear and you have a sample of 100 of them, you'd use a lowercase n to represent the 100 bears in your sample. If you by chance know that in the entire world there's 5,000 bears, then you'd use a capital N as the population value if you knew for sure what the population value was. X with a line over it is called X bar. That's your sample mean. It uses the same formula as if you were going to use the population mean. The population mean use, uses a symbol called mu. It's kind of a fancy M. It's a Greek M. It's going to be the same idea as your typical average. You add up all the values and divide it by the total number. Excel does a really great job of calculating this when you need to do that. S is your sample standard deviation. The pop population standard deviation uses a symbol sigma. It's kind of like an O with a tail on the top. It's also a Greek letter. And I highly recommend using Excel. I'm not going to go into doing that for this video because we're not making the calculations. The standard deviation tells us how spread out the data is. So a confidence interval or a confidence level gives us a range of values that are likely to include the population value. So just like I said, with our bear population, we can calculate the mean and then calculate an interval of perhaps the average weight. And so we'd say we expect the average weight to be between number one and number two. And we're going to be so confident based on the calculations and the formulas we use. Or we're 95% confident that the optimal growth temperature for a specific bacteria will be between 17 and 25 degrees Celsius. Based on the sample that we found, we've come up with these values and we're going to use the statistics to come up with what we expect will happen within the population. We're not going to be right 100% of the time because we don't have 100% of the population. And so it's just, we are confident that 95 times out of 100, this is what will happen. Um, later on, we're going to be, need to know what this z alpha over 2 is for our formula. It's a centered z score, essentially, that gives you the area with 99% of the area under the bell curve in the middle. And you'll get two, you'll get a positive and a negative, and you're going to want to use the inverse normal distribution app. Um, at least that's my recommendation. I will show you that. So this is one inverse normal distribution app that I like. I'll link it in the comments. And so what you're going to do is tell it what you want. So in our case, we were looking at a 95% confidence interval for a bacteria. And we're just going to, for now, just use a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one because we want that z alpha over two which means we need between. So what it's saying is this shaded area is 95% of the curve. If we were to shade in the whole thing, it would be 100%. But this 1.96, that is our z alpha over 2. So if we were to change it to 92, uh, 
0.92 and hit recalculate it would show us that our z alpha over 2 would be 1.751 that's the shaded area so this inverse normal distribution app as long as you click between and put the area up top and keep the mean at zero and the standard deviation of one will give you that z alpha over two so now we're ready to talk about the margin of error formula so the margin of error formula is this z alpha over two times s or our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n so first we need to find our z alpha over 2 for a 99% confidence interval. So we'll go back to this inverse normal distribution app. We'll type in 0.99. We'll make sure that we're clicking between. And when you recalculate, we get a 2.576 for our z alpha over 2. And now we'll go back to our problem. So we found our z alpha over 2. Our s is 6. Our sample size is 13 and the sample mean is not needed for this calculation. So we'll set up our formula. Here's the z alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n. We'll plug in those values and when you calculate it, and I like to use Desmos, 